More than 900 days have passed since the mid-June 2022 launch of China's first catapult carrier, the Fujian ship. So with the Fujian ship having been launched for so long, why hasn't China's fourth aircraft carrier shown up yet? Tough luck guys and gals. Let's get together and fully dissect this right away. There are three difficulties behind this. One is the problem of the carrier service cycle. China's aircraft carriers are usually launched at intervals of about five years, like the Liaoning in 2012, the Shandong in 2017, and the Fujian in 2022. The main reason why China does not produce aircraft carriers at a faster rate is to ensure that the service cycle of the carriers is stable and that there will not be a problem of rapid service and rapid decommissioning of the carriers. According to the current rate of China, launching an aircraft carrier every five years, let's assume that the service time of an aircraft carrier is 50 years, and by the time the Liaoning is decommissioned China, will have 10 aircraft carriers. This number is similar to the current number of carriers in the US. But what if China accelerates the rate of carrier construction and produces carriers at a rate of one carrier launched every three years? At this rate of carrier production, by the time China retires the Liaoning, China will have 16 carriers in service at the same time. That number would be terrifying and would put a serious burden on a country. You should know that aircraft carriers are very costly, and the current US is only serving 11 carriers at the same time to produce aircraft carriers fast, but also do not want to serve so many aircraft carriers at the same time. There are only two ways. One is to compress the service cycle of the aircraft carrier. One is to produce a sufficient number of aircraft carriers after the production of aircraft carriers, not to produce aircraft carriers. In the case of the former, this is obviously an extremely wasteful approach to military spending. If the carriers are only allowed to serve for about 30 years, then only more carriers can be produced to fill the number of carriers, which will undoubtedly drive up military expenditure. Even the United States service carriers are allowed to serve for about 50 years. The current U.S. Nimitz class first ship Nimitz has been in service for about 50 years before the U.S. Service Kitty Hawk class carriers are also about 40 to 50 years of service cycle. It can be seen that even the world's highest military spending of the United States, but also can not do this kind of aircraft carrier with 30 years on the direct retirement of things. As for the production of a sufficient number of aircraft carriers, the production of aircraft carriers, the practice, in fact, bring more bad consequences. This practice will lead to a country not building aircraft carriers for a long time, which will lead to the problem of a break in the generation of talents. By that time, carrier technology will be in serious decline. So the only way to keep a country from producing and commissioning too many carriers at the same time and not having the problem of not building carriers for too long is to produce carriers at a low and even rate. That's why it's normal that China doesn't have a fourth carrier in the pipeline yet. According to China's rate of launching a carrier in five years, China's fourth carrier might be launched in 2027. Chinese aircraft carriers usually have various reports on the internet gradually about a year before they are launched. So around 2026, China should be able to see news about China's fourth aircraft carrier. The second problem is that China's personnel cannot keep up because of the rapid development of China's navy. China is currently facing a serious phenomenon of ships waiting for people. A country to train naval crew usually is old with new, half the ship of the old with half the ship of new people. That is to say, China's navy to train a large number of qualified naval crew itself needs a large number of old crew. The number of old crew members determines how many qualified crew members China can produce. If China's navy was developing at a slower pace, then China wouldn't need to worry about this problem. But the problem is that China's naval development speed is too fast, warship launching speed far exceeds the crew training speed. Currently, China's warships launched in a year will have more than 50,000 tons, 8 to 90,000 tons is the norm. If the aircraft carrier and amphibious assault ship launching, the total tonnage of warships can be more than 150,000 tons. In the international arena, a country's total tonnage of warships can exceed 300,000 tons. The total tonnage of its navy can basically be ranked in the world's top 10. That is to say, the fastest China can launch a world's top 10 navy in two years. This speed is not horrible, but the crew side is limited by the number of old crew. Plus the old crew also have the problem of retirement. So the training of new crew and China's warship launching speed is seriously mismatched. China's navy has entered the ship waiting for people situation against this background. 
It is actually very difficult for China to produce aircraft carriers quickly, even if China launches a carrier every three years. There will be a bunch of new crews manning the carriers, and then we'll probably see a bunch of accident news. The third difficulty is technical. Regardless of whether China's next carrier is a nuclear-powered carrier or a sister ship to the Fujian ship, China's fourth carrier is one that needs to be redesigned for optimization. This is because the current Fujian carrier itself is a halfway redesigned carrier, which makes it flawed in its design. At the very beginning, the Fujian ship was actually intended to use a steam catapult system, but because of the rapid development of the electromagnetic catapult system, the design was changed halfway. After the design change, the carrier naturally had some minor problems. So when China builds its fourth carrier, even if it is a sister ship to Fujian ship, it will improve on the Fujian ship's design to solve these minor problems. So the Type 003 carrier represented by the Fujian ship is history, and China's next carrier will be a Type 003 carrier no matter what. And as modifying carrier designs is more time consuming, it's not unusual for China to have no news of a fourth carrier yet. If China's fourth carrier is a nuclear powered carrier, the technical threshold is even greater. China needs more time to solve the technical difficulties. And nuclear powered aircraft carriers are not only the technical difficulties of the carrier itself, but also to consider the various problems faced by the aircraft carrier decommissioning. Because nuclear powered aircraft carriers in decommissioning, its nuclear power reactors are very difficult to deal with. Like the U.S., nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Enterprise decommissioned in 2012, dragged into a professional site dismantling in 2013, to now has been more than 10 years have not been dismantled, and the U.S. has paid more than $1 billion in dismantling costs. So China's development of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers need to be careful and prudent, that in the time is relatively slow, is very normal.